What's up, YouTube? It's Joey. Have you ever wondered what a college engineering degree is like? Well, today I'll be going over my bachelor's in computer engineering from Boston University. Well, at least half of a degree. Because, as many of you may already know, from my own high school, I did a lot of AP subjects, as well as took some courses at the Harvard Extension School, which let me credit out many of the courses for my degree. So if we look at the planning sheet here, all the ones that are crossed out are the ones that I had finished by the time I even entered college. So I finished Calculus 1 and 2 because of my BC Calculus exam, Multivariate Calculus from the Harvard Extension School, Physics 1 and 2 coming from my Physics APs, Electricity and Magnetism and Mechanics, the Principles of General Chemistry, which came from my Chemistry AP, Introduction to Engineering Computation, which was AP Comp Sci, um, the Technical Elective, which was a Bioinformatics Algorithms course I took over at the Harvard Extension School, which is really cool. The two social sciences, which came from psychology and environmental science, and also a general education elective, which actually came from writing. So given that, I had to spend the next two years to blast through my degree. Let's go over exactly how that went. So we can start the degree in the first semester of my freshman year with differential equations. I was one of only three freshman first semester students in the class, which is really cool. I think it's a really important class for engineers to learn. Basically, it has a lot of application to fluid dynamics, thermal heat transfer, and it's especially being used in AI research right now where they're using some differential equation solvers to solve some interesting problems. So I had a really nice teacher who was really thoughtful. She made sure that students' mental health was well taken care of. Some people who were stressed out after the election of Trump, she gave them an extension on their assignments. One thing that especially stands out to me is that on the final exam for that course, I actually slept in because I thought that the exam was going to be on a different day. But I decided to wake up and just quickly check my schedule to see on the off chance I have any exam today, which would have been the worst nightmare. I check the schedule and as I'm reading it, it turns out the exam is happening right now. So the worst part is I'm located one hour away from the school, which is crazy. So I rush to my computer, send a quick email to my teacher apologizing for being late to the exam. We drive over to the school. I'm sweating. I'm breathing. I'm so stressed out. I get to the exam room and my teacher says, hey, why don't you take a breather and walk around first? And I'm thinking, really? Like you're not going to kill me? And then she says, do you want to have lunch first too? I mean, you seem like really stressed out. I say, no, it's fine. But you know, it's like this teacher is literally an angel. She saved my life. And she didn't even take off any points for me being late to the exam. I finished the course with an A minus and it's honestly one of the best <laughs> memories I can have for undergrad with regards to a course. So the next course in my undergrad is pretty boring. It was basically writing seminar. We can have any topic. I picked some archaeology based writing course, which unfortunately was a 8 a.m. course. I would never recommend an 8 a.m. course anymore. Basically got to wake up early and it's pretty, pretty terrible. So that's the first time I got to see really uh, people who really slack off. There's this one girl where the course is only about an hour, a bit over an hour long. This one girl always came to class at the 40 minute mark and the teacher didn't really say much she was kind of nervous she didn't know how to stand her ground and then one day the teacher kind of just blows it at this girl who's always coming 40 minutes late i thought that was pretty funny i had a b for the course the next course i had was principles of molecular and cell biology the reason why i'm taking a bio course is actually because before i did my computer engineering degree i actually started off as a biomedical engineer I didn't know that I wanted to do computer engineering. I thought that maybe I wanted to pursue biology plus engineering and maybe combine both of those ideas since I kind of liked biology in my high school. So I took this molecular bio course. I thought it'd be easy because I took AP bio and I got a five on the exam. But in the beginning, I saw people were even asking questions like, I don't even know what a gene is. So that was really funny. Suddenly it went from zero to 100 where from people asking what is a gene, all the way to really complicated things, complicated proteins, lots of things to remember. And every time I had the tests, I would get something like C's. And every time I had a lab, I would keep messing up the product. So I would have to um, take some, I would mess up the first lab. We'd use the results of that first lab into the second lab. And then I would mess up the second lab. So I'd have to get something new 
to carry on to the third lap. It was honestly really a mess, and my lab partner and me were kind of, um, it was pretty funny. Um, anyways, I ended up that course with a B plus. So that's the first time I learned about how, I guess if you're taking a hard engineering course, things can be really curved because I swear, I had a C for every single test, midterm one, midterm two, and the final exam. And somehow, and with all the terrible labs, I still ended up with a B plus. So that was interesting. So the next course I took was Intro to Linear Algebra. Pretty interesting course, deals with eigenvectors, vectors. That was my first experience with a teacher who had, I guess, like a really thick Russian accent. And I thought, well, that's cool. That's like the stereotype is. When you go to college, you'll have the teachers, with the really cool, really thick, like Russian accents that's um, kind of difficult to understand, but you gotta learn it because they're very smart. So anyways, I finished that course with a B plus. And the final course I had for my freshman year was Introduction to Heart and Connect, which is basically like an introduction to engineering course. It was really cool because my teacher, um, Professor Kinsey, was someone who had a lot of passion for engineering. He really went over the whole history of the beginning of the computer to the modern cell phone and how he himself was inspired by engineering. I mean, his personality is something where he says he wakes up every morning and all he can think about is engineering. I mean, maybe that's maybe some people think that's much, but I mean, that's what really brings him some passion. So for that course, we had to do some programming with a Microsoft Connect. So I just built a Unity 3D game which incorporated a Connect. And I probably had the best project in the course just because I already knew how to program in Unity. And people um, didn't really know, a lot of people came in not knowing how to program. So I got lucky, um, I impressed a teacher, and you'll see how he comes up later in this story. Another thing I also did in my undergrad was I also did a research project with a professor. So before I came into undergrad, I was working with some virtual reality development. And I messaged a professor asking if I could borrow one of the connects or if he can set me up with any of these things. So the professor noticed that I was doing some development with Unity and he actually needed that for his research project. So he actually put me along and I would say it's really lucky because I got to have a research experience where I got paid. And even though it's not like a full salary, it's still something where I was really proud of it and I could put it on my resume. And basically, it was my first introduction to machine learning. Basically, I had to research generating images through Unity and having some machine learning algorithm actually use those images to train an image recognition model. So that was my first semester of freshman year. Second semester, I got into Introduction of Logic Design. It's a cool course that deals with very long circuits and really the fundamentals of computer logic. So all of the gates, and it deals with like the K maps, data compression, logic tables, and it also was taught on the whiteboard. It taught me that I actually really like whiteboard teaching. I prefer it over PowerPoints because I guess I prefer to copying notes while someone's writing it quickly on the board. The next course I had in that spring of my freshman year was Introduction to Software Engineering. So basically, I only knew Java at the time, but I had to learn C++ for this course. I was able to carry over a lot of Java, but there's also a lot of stuff that was specific to C++, like memory management, and um, like you had a little bit more control over how things run with C++, so I had to learn that, and that was pretty cool. I got to learn some pretty cool projects. Um, professor was a little bit boring, but I still managed an A, and I still enjoyed doing the projects. The next course that I did was Introduction to Probability. It's a cool course. It covered different probability models and random variables. So this is really important if you're in engineering and you want to design a machine and you want to calculate, say, the probability of the machine, um, the whole system failing. And maybe you need to break down each component of the machine and use a random variable to calculate, say, the probability of that component breaking. And then you consider the whole machine as a unit. There are just many applications for probability and it's a very important thing. So I also used some things like Markov chains, it taught me a lot of some stuff. 
but because I had some experience with high school probability, as well as some probability for my bioinformatics algorithms course, which is very probability-based biology course, it was pretty easy for me to get an A in this course. The next course I had was Introduction to Engineering Design. This was probably an underrated course, which I should have taken more seriously. Basically, it's a course where you have to design your project. Um, basically, uh, you get assigned a project at random, and then you have to build it. Our project for our team was to build a hydroponic system for plants. Basically, something that lets you grow plants inside of those cages by yourself. And um, we had to do all the programming with the Arduino boards. We had to set up some pipes. We had to have a battery connected to it. We had to set up some LED lights to shine lights to the plants. All of those things have to come into consideration. We had to do things like planning out the cost of the, the bill of materials, as well as a timeline for how long each of these things would take to make. So um, even though I didn't utilize this course as much, I think it could potentially be one of the most valuable courses because I really do believe that project-based courses are where you can really shine the most. And if you're an engineer and you're not doing project-based courses, then it's really tough to say you're just an engineer if you're only studying the theory. This next course I did in that spring was electric circuits. This is a simple circuits course. I took it with one of my favorite professors now. Um, he was Professor Lee. And he had a very interesting accent where he was always like this. And he would say, yes, yes, yes. It was a very funny course. Um, he's a teacher I ultimately got my recommendation for grad school from. And I competed with my friends to get the highest score in this class. I mean, us, me and my friends, we sat in the front row and we were competing over the nine, uh, 99s, 100s, 98s. And he really liked all of us. So fun course, you get to work with some circuits, work in the lab, put them together, V equals IR, all that fun stuff. Over in the summer, this was where I stayed in the dorm with my best friend Srujan. I mean, honestly, it's one of the most fun summers I've ever had. Um, we weren't like that close of friends before we came into it. We kind of just thought, hey, we're both in the summer, want to go room together? And we totally bonded. We played Halo, we played Guitar Hero, we were competing with each other. We played Zelda Breath of the Wild, we went out all the time. I mean, honestly, one of the best summers of my life. So that summer, I took um, four courses. First course I took was Electromagnetic Systems 1 and 2. This was a very theoretical course that really took electric circuits and blew it everywhere. It covered the Maxwell equations, and basically the first course covered like static electro systems, um, electric systems. Then the next course is covered like dynamic systems and everything had to do with electromagnetism and just lots of complicating topics. Smith charts, transmission line equations, antennas, electric waveguides, deriving everything. Man, he wrote so quickly on the board and he had to follow it so fast. Maybe everybody in the class was confused, but somehow I still managed to get an A in both of them. The second part of my summer was probably the worst part of the summer. That's because I wasn't rooming with my friend Strugin anymore. I mean, um, I was just kind of staying at home. And then in that summer, I had to take two humanities courses, which I mean, actually one of them was fun. The first course that I took was political science, which was a really cool course. I got to study some philosophers like John Rawls, John Locke, Immanuel Kant. We had to read a bunch of philosophy papers. I mean, something that I really like myself is studying philosophy and understanding how it integrates with, I guess, like the real world and the practical applications. That's because in my high school days, I participated in a very philosophical debate called Lincoln Douglas. So I love the um, political philosophy course. I finished with an A minus. I loved writing every essay. And then I got to writing semester two. It was a creative writing analysis course. And I liked the books. We got to read some cool books by like um, Murakami and some like just like interesting books, um, basically interesting fiction books. But I felt like my analysis was good. I felt like I was a pretty good writer, but my teacher hated my writing and he thought it was like too philosophical. So I started off with like a B minus for my first essay. And I thought, are you kidding me? Like I, I wrote, I spent a lot of time writing it. So I kept 
trying to improve it, trying to improve it, at least to meet the standards, and I got it up to a B plus. Still, I don't like writing courses. I was very glad when I was out of my last writing course of really my whole college career. The next course that I finally did after I finished that summer and started my sec my sophomore year was Applied Algorithms and Data Structures. So this course is kind of like the Leak Code class. It teaches you all the fundamentals of interview questions like stacks, heaps, um, linked lists, sorting algorithms, everything to get you prepared for the interview. So again, even though it's a computer engineering major, there's a lot of overlap with computer science and it's training people just to be overall well-rounded because if you're a computer engineer, you still need to know how to program very effectively. So because of that, it was a cool course. I liked the algorithms, finished it with an A minus. The next course was also taught by the professor who I mentioned earlier, Professor Kinsey, who taught the Heart and Connect. He taught computer organism. This is a course that got me really into computer architecture. So basically it opened my mind to the entire system of computers, starting from bits to assembly level programming, to the compiler, to the operating system, to caches and page tables. I mean, really some like before this, I had no clue really how computers did everything. And it was something that really opened my mind to the whole world of computation. I was also um, able to surprise my teacher when I told him I was a senior. I mean, he had me in that first class of my freshman year and I was a freshman at the time and I was a really good student. And then suddenly I came in as a senior and he's like, whoa, what happened here? So he's also the professor that caused me to want to take my master's towards the direction of computer architecture and really just guide my whole career towards the things like architecture and hardware programming and maybe operating systems. The project in the course was to build our own MIPS processor, which is supposed to be able to simulate a CPU. Next course was intro to operating systems. Don't remember much of that class. I swear I slept through most of it, but I was able to solve the projects. So I worked on the projects, did the assignments, and somehow managed with an A minus. But I guess um, if you focus a lot on the assignments and you work diligently at them, then you can get by. The next course, which I had, that was engineering mechanics. This is where it's like all the, the mechanical physics, like the bridges, trusses, forces, push, pull, everything you deal with, like physics mechanics. So this was a pretty cool course. I mean, you need it if you're an engineer, you need to know how the world works. You know, like where do forces even come from and how to analyze free body diagrams. Um, so yeah, finished that course with a B plus. I got to build a bridge. It was pretty fun. Um, and finally, for that semester, I also had to take senior design project. So senior design is basically where for that whole year, you have to take all your skills that you learn all throughout engineering and work on a project with a team where you like design something. You can come up with your own idea, but usually professors assign out projects for people to take up. So our project was basically assigned where we would have to build some security system that would take advantage of like Wi-Fi signals or any type of radio signals and use them to authenticate a user. Our professor who gave us the assignment had this big dream of using radio signals to reflect off of people's bodies, then using machine learning in order to analyze the reflection of those signals and use it to authenticate a person. Unfortunately, we felt it was too ambitious and none of us knew how to do any AI programming. So we went with a different option where we just authenticate people based on reading the signal coming from their phone. We had a, a radio which is able to read basically like any signal and switch frequencies and is able to like pick up cell phone signal. So we just use that one to authenticate a person. So far from the idea that the professor wished, but it was more realistic for us to implement it. So um, the next course was just um, for, now we're getting into my final semester of university. This is discrete mathematics for engineering. A for the course, cool course about logics and proofs. It reminds me a lot about geometry proofs. Basically, you have like to write step by step proving something using like if and then statements. It's a fun course. So I think it has some good applications to set theory, especially if you want to get into maybe like 
I guess, pure mathematics combination with engineering. Um, I actually don't really know too much about that, but that's what you would do if you want to get into that area. The next course I took was Introduction to Electronics. It was basically another extension to Introduction um, to the Electric Circuits course I to told you earlier, where again, I had Professor Lee. So basically, four courses of my whole college, which is basically like almost like 20% of my college, was done under Professor Lee. He was a great professor. And that's why I had to, that's why I picked him to be the person who would give me a recommendation. It was a very fun course, taught a lot about the transistor level um, circuits and analysis. Another course I took was microprocessors, which was under a really enthusiastic professor who wanted us to be able to like build this, um, have a CPU, um, understand like every component of it, the caching mechanisms, how we can even make our design our own circuit board like through PCB. And also he wanted us to learn how to solder everything together. It was a pretty ambitious course. Unfortunately, we weren't able to go in depth as much as the professor wanted, but at least they gave us some exposure and it was a good attempt to try to get us into the world of microprocessors, even though application-based. Um, realistically, we didn't even build a single PCB board. And then we were just experimenting with the soldering, but not so much that we can get like enough skill with it. And finally, the last course of my whole undergrad was computer architecture with Professor Kinsey. So basically, yeah, I had Kinsey for three courses and Professor Lee for um, four courses. So yeah, the two same teachers got both recommendations from both of them. So this was an, an, um, a really cool course that expand, an, expanded on the computer architecture side of computer engineering and introduced me to cloud architecture. And basically it was just a really cool way to finally ease my way into my master's degree. I just say one interesting story from that class was that um, from that class, there was this one guy who smelled absolutely terrible. He came into the classroom and then I was like, please don't sit in front of me. And then he sat right in front of me and I thought I was going to die. I mean, it's kind of the guy who has like a big beard and actually looks like he has food inside of his beard. So memorable story from that class. But anyway, that's my whole engineering degree in a nutshell. Took a lot of courses um, over and sho shoved them all into that span of two years. And I do feel like a lot of the courses are really fun, but they're especially more fun in the master's degree video, which I will be showing and recording later on. So for all the people, thanks for watching and thanks for following this channel. And I hope you can continue to get good grades and get A's in your engineering journey. See you guys. And that's a wrap. Mm-hmm. <laughs>